Hey fellow backyard boyers, Nick here. Well, I've really gotten into atlatls recently. For the last year, I've actually been working on kind of a big project for me, all about atlatls. So today, I wanted to show you guys how to make a really simple takedown dart for atlatls. Now this is an idea that I got from Justin Garnett of basketmakeratlatl.com. You can see I've got my atlatl here, and this takedown dart fits perfectly with it. And to put it together, you just slide the connectors together, and there it is. You're ready to throw. Let's get started. Here's a basic list of the materials and supplies you'll need to build along with me today. I'll go over each item on the list in detail as they come up in the video. We'll start by working on our dowels first. One of the nice things about this takedown dart is that because we're going to be working on it in sections, you don't need a piece of wood that's as long as your finished dart. Our dart's going to be a little over five feet long, and these dowels are only four feet long. As long as your dowels are 20 inches or longer, you'll be able to make this dart today. So you're going to need two dowels, or one and a half dowels. We're going to need a total of three finished pieces when we're done. But two standard four foot long dowels, will make one dart. So three dowels will make two darts. And I'm using 3 8 inch dowels. Today I'm using lodgepole pine, though you could use just about any type of dowel as long as it's not too brittle. Now this, these atlatl darts aren't going to be under a whole lot of stress, and the type of the connection that we're using makes spine of the actual wood less important because the connectors will compensate for that a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is measure three 20 inch long pieces. So I'm going to cut that out and I'll show you what that looks like. I've gone ahead and cut three 20 inch sections out. So here are the three dowels ready to go. One thing I like to do is take a file and just round off the ends of the dowel. That way when we're putting everything together it's nice and smooth, it doesn't catch, and it's a little easier to put things together, especially once we get the takedown dart assembled, it'll be easier to pull it apart and put it back together with just a little bevel here. Now we're going to work on the front of the arrow. I've already gone ahead and tapered the tip. You can do this with just about anything. A knife, file, sandpapers, a grinder, it really doesn't matter. You could even use a pencil sharpener. The only thing is you don't want this point to be completely pointed. You want there to be a little bit of a flat here. Now, Because we're using these PEX points, you can use just about any taper. It really doesn't matter. These will expand to fit. And as for the point itself, I've got a link floating around here somewhere that will take you to the video on how to make one of these. The first thing that I'm going to do is put a little hot glue on the tip here. So I've got my torch. Just heat it up. Apply a little bit of glue to the tip. Now you want to take your PEX pile and just lightly, just gently heat it up. You don't want to burn it, but you want to warm this up. Now one of the advantages to using a torch or an open flame on this is that you can see the end has kind of melted. That makes it so that if you're shooting into a bag target or some sort of target, the point won't get stuck in the target, and there'll be a nice transition. So once the point is warm enough, 
heat up your glue and slide the point off. Now you want to push down just a little bit, but you don't want to stretch the point out. Stretching the point out will weaken this so that if you hit something you may fold the point a little too readily. What's nice about these points though is that when they hit something hard, they will take the the impact and it won't damage your atlatl dart. So you just want to kind of twist it until it sets. Now that it's set, here's the point end of our dart. To make the takedown sleeves or connectors for our dart, you're going to need two pieces of 3 8 inch inner diameter PEX pipe. You want to cut this three inches long. This is really nice because it fits really well over the 3 8 inch dowel. This is going to be the center piece of our dart. This side is going to connect to the back end and this side is going to connect to the front. So this side is going to get its own connector. What you want to do is apply some hot melt glue to the front of the dowel. You want to make sure not to apply it onto the end or it might stick to the other dowel when you connect them together. Take your connector and just heat it up. This is just like putting on the PEX pile. You want to heat it up about halfway and also let a little bit of the heat go over the ends just to round off and soften up the ends there. So that's ready. You want to push this in about halfway. All right. Now you just want to let this cool. Now you want to take the back end of your dart, this is the final piece, you want to attach a connector just like you did on the middle piece. Except on this one, we're going to take the end and we're going to be cutting a cup for our spur. Now, there's several ways you could do this. You could take a knife or a spade bit or a drill bit. Today I'm going to be using a 5 16 inch drill bit. And just by hand, I want to line it up as close as I can get to the center and just start twisting it. It's going to take a little bit to get it centered, but once it's centered, you can just kind of go for it. So once you start it going, you want to just keep going until it's fairly deep. This, one, this is going to be fairly shallow. When you're done, it should sort of resemble the top of a golf tee. And here it is. So now we're ready for our fletchings. Now that the back end of the dart is complete, we're going to work on our fletching. I'm going to be using duct tape for this. So I'm starting off with strips of duct tape about 8 inches long. You want a minimum, of, you want three pieces, and I like to have two of the same color and one of a third color. So you want to go from the end here, and about an inch and a half to two inches from the end, you want to place your first piece of tape. You want to lay it on straight, and I like to do it with the grain. If you can see the grains running this way, or the growth rings are running this way, so I'm laying this on flat. Take my second piece, I want to line it up and lay it on just like the first. Now, this is the important part, I want to actually take my fingers and push back so that they meet up kind of near the back at an angle. This is going to force the duct tape into this sort of shape so that the third can go on top. Now you take your third piece, oops, 
Try not to get it stuck. Take the third piece, line it up. You can see you want to line it up along this seam here. You take this, fold it over itself. You want to fold it over and have it connect on the other side, on the other seam. Once you've done that, you just kind of, you gently pinch it and the sliding motion helps to keep everything aligned. Alright, there we go. So here it is. Now, I'll take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to trim my fletchings down. And I just go on the back. All right, and here's our finished fletching. I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple of strips of duct tape about a quarter of an inch wide and just place it on the front. And this will help give the fletching just a tiny bit of a twist to it. And go ahead on the back end and you want to go in the opposite direction so that your twist goes all the way down the fletching. You can see it now it starts off this way and it kind of twists back. This will help stabilize the dart in flight. Now that we have all the pieces it's time to put them together. Take two pieces that you want to put together Take just a regular candle, unscented works best. You just want the paraffin wax. You want to apply some to the side that's going to go inside of the connector. This will keep anything from sticking to it. Also put a little end, a little on the end here to keep glue from sticking to it as well. And you want to go ahead and heat this portion of the connector up, just like we did when we were putting it on. Once it's soft enough, you just slide it in place. Once it's connected, you want to just sight down the dart and make sure that your pieces line up as straight as possible. What's nice about this is once it's cool, any minor bends you can kind of just bend out by hand and straighten. And any straightening you're going to do on this dart will be at the connectors. So it makes it really simple to always have the dart lined up for every shot. There you go. You just want to let this cool, and we're going to do it to this side. Now this is the dart we just finished up, but if you wanted a longer, heavier dart, you could easily make one out of half an inch dowels using half an inch CPVC pipe for the connectors. This works really well. It's a really nice, it's a little stiffer of a dart, really heavy dart. Now that the connectors are cool, the dart is finished. To take it down, all you do is just pull apart at the connectors. And there it is. When you put it back together, all you have to do is be sure to sight down the shaft, and if it's crooked, just lightly straighten it through the connectors. There it is. Ready to go. Load it up into your atlatl. 
and let it fly. There it is. Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun today. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.